Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Raising Our Gift to Children right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest is Brenda E. Koch. She is a very gifted kids book writer, and it's to build that self-esteem in the kids. One of the books is Let's Play, the other one, Let's Go Bobby, and Bullying Hurts. And we're going to be looking at these wonderful books here today, which I do have right here. I'm going to be sharing with everyone. But why did she write them? And what is she trying to say in each of the books? She is an educator. She knows what kids need. But one of the biggest problems that we have today before we even get into education is the is the lack of acceptance of who we are and our differences. And most children don't see the differences. They kind of just see somebody else they vibe with or not vibe with. A lot of the conflict that we have generally comes from the home front or from society as it is. So if a child is different, an eye missing, a leg missing, a hand missing, or of a different color, there shouldn't be a judgment passed on that child. And we're going to be talking about that today and the books. And, you know, there's one here, it hurts. And bullying does hurt. And that hurt stays with that child into adulthood and affects everything in life. How do we stop this? How do we stop it right at the beginning, nip it in the bud and build that self-esteem with our children and treat them differently so that they can grow up, you know, it, more abundantly and more secure in who they are. So let's dive into the conversation with Brenda. Welcome show. Oh, darling, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. <laughs> You're an educator. You've seen firsthand, you know, what children mm -hmm. need and, and how, oh gosh, awful it is to see a child bullied on any level, whether it's the acceptance of their color or something wrong with them or just being different. You know, it's all that you've written here, whether it's let's go, let's play and all of this. It's all about basically people accepting each other for who they are rather than mm -hmm. this dictation. Where do you think this comes from uh, that a child who normally when, you know, they're before the age of five, just love each other for who they are. They don't care. Uh, is it in the school system? Is it systemic there that all of a sudden non-acceptance is there for a child? Okay, that was a very broken question. <laughs> we kind of stopped in the middle of that. But um, I, in my personal experience and what I see is um, I believe when children come into school, they're not always aware of the differences. Some children uh, that do go to a daycare setting or that are involved in like social groups uh, will see differences. Uh, but do they always understand them? No. Uh, so the children that come directly into school and that have only been at home with mom or dad or the caregiver, um, they're not always seeing the differences in in children, in anybody, not just children, right? So I, I what I'm trying to do is get this uh, information out to them in these books uh, at a very young age. Um, I believe that um, differences aren't always... Uh, pointed out when the child is at home because it's just mommy and daddy brother sister right there's that's your family that's what you're growing up with uh, until you get out into that school or into those groups that's when they are seeing differences that's that's what I my personal opinion on that that's when they're when they're getting out right mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see a show like Sesame Street and it can be introduced and then mommy or daddy or whoever's attending will uh, explain it if the question comes up but a lot of times um, when we come into the school system, we um, children, not all children, not all children, some children will be afraid, mm. right? They'll be afraid of, of the differences 
and they they'll be shy they'll cry they might not want to come back the day so what i'm trying to do is with let's play uh is def definitely show um awareness but not only awareness sarah also acceptance right because we want to be aware and we want to accept we want both together and uh that's what um bobby is trying to uh relay in let's play yeah we have let's play right here and you know really when we think about it we play throughout our lives right but playing mm -hmm. with a child is so very important because we're teaching in a lot of do's and don'ts you know uh, share mm -hmm. your toys be kind to one another no you can't do that you know it's uh, don't hurt someone's feelings if we could teach them the art of play right from the word go of being considerate mm -hmm. to one another i think that's really really important and you know i love your drawings where you've just got it very very simple and mm -hmm. you know and it shows a kid with a foot missing an eye missing an ear missing and this is him and this is the thing we need to accept people um you know did you laugh at me because i'm different well why are we laughing at people because they're different aren't we all different we're all unique mm -hmm. in exactly way. you know we are all born babies yes we you know we may come out slightly differently but we all come out and you know you put here we may look at the same but we are not mm -hmm. from the color of our skin to the shape of our bodies we are all different i think one of the biggest problems we have in the world today is that we want to categorize everybody with the same brush and we don't want to accept that we have different mm -hmm. approaches, different personalities, different looks, different traditions. What is wrong with us? Because all those differences make it all up as a beautiful garden, even to be boring if it's all the same flower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the difference too is today, when I was growing up, everything was hush, 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 hush. Mm -hmm. But today, it's not we have we have social media right everybody's out there it's all about um being equal being you know everybody's in it's all inclusive totally mm -hmm. inclusive right that's where we that's where we are today and uh back when i went to school it wasn't inclusive right there was schools for this and there were schools for that yes so um today today that's a big difference and and it, and that's what uh sorry that's what creates awareness right so from that point, uh, actually, I did a lesson last uh, week, and uh, it was about the differences of people. And I took M and M's, I took Smarties, and I took Eggies, and I showed them that they're all different shapes and different colors. But when I cut into them, we were all the same on the inside, and like the kids just loved it up, right? And then of course, that's when I bring in, I brought in Let's Play. And I uh, and they just loved it. And actually, it was virtual because we're doing virtual teaching. But it was it was really good, really good. Mm. I don't know where prejudice comes from. You know, it, it has to be imposed upon our children because they're not born that way, right? It's taught. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we are looking at an inclusive school, inclusive situation, uh, and we're taught right from the word go, it's okay to be different. It's okay um to be flawed that's what makes us unique and this idea of perfection whose idea is it whose idea of perfection do we yeah. have to live up to most mm -hmm. people's adults problems come from this illusion of having to live up to someone's idea or society's idea of success and perfection and we let ourselves down all the time because it's an illusion we cannot be that to yeah. everybody teaching a child right from the word go to love who they are in all that they are is going to have a, a better adult so are oh. we cutting out okay folks we have a, a bit of a technical problem which you know we love the internet but sometimes it can be rather challenging and that's okay we'll just work through it so we're going to pick up where we left off here and we're talking about bobby and bobby it's a little compromise he has a leg missing an eye and an ear missing but it doesn't you know that doesn't make him any less so and in this beautiful book let's play you know we have we are all different and the beauty of being different is that 
we get to experience other people's cultures, other people's ways of doing things, the food they eat, the way they dress, the way they view life. And we learn from that and it makes it exciting. And, you know, as he points out, we're not broken. We're just unique and it's okay. You know, that's the point, folks. It's okay to be different. And if we could stop judging people for being different, then we, you know, we would have a much more harmonious life. And, and, you know, we all do things differently and unique. And don't you love these drawings? Brenda's done all of these as well, which I love. It's simple. The beauty of this book is that it's simple for a child to learn to read. But I always say when a parent reads or a grandparent reads to the child, they're receiving a lesson as well. Because very often as adults, we get caught up in this expectation of society, this expectation of how we should be, uh, this dictation of what is important in life. And we forget what really is important. And having a book like this that you can read to your child, which teaches them acceptance, even excitement of being different, I think it's a really good education for the parents as well. Don't you, Brenda? Yes, I do. I believe that um, we catch them when they're young. Mm -hmm. We have to start children a lot younger today. The world is so advanced out there. Uh, the way everything's going, um, kids are doing things that I would have never thought of doing uh, or that my parents would have never let me do at the ages that they're doing them today. And I totally 100% uh, believe we have to catch them when they're young and get started with all these uh, differences, acceptance, awareness everything it all has to be the bullying like race mm -hmm. these books are geared three years to seven and uh, i believe that's the way to start because uh everything is instilled from three to five right those are what most valuable years to learn so let's get it let's get it in there yes um okay. the thing about that three to five age group they're sponges aren't they they absorb mm -hmm. everything but then at five they go to school and they're going yeah. to absorb everything that's around them there. And if you have this broken structure around them of division, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just in the acceptance of the way they look, it's in the grades and children will learn at different levels. And mm -hmm. we can't judge a child because they're learning in a different way than another child. So no. I think teaching them acceptance and also not judging because the child mm -hmm. didn't get an A on that or didn't get it first time round. That's something that we really need to look at. And you've got another lovely book here, Let's Go, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. this one is, um, let me get to it. Get to it, the first pages. Like this is him, this is Bobby, right? So mm -hmm. this is me in all my glory, this is me. This is me, you know, wearing a prosthetic. So he's now wearing a prosthetic. And that, you know, instead of looking at it, oh, poor Bobby, it's like, oh, wow, great. Bobby's got a prosthetic. So now he can run or walk or do things like other kids, right? So it's celebrated. Mm -hmm. And you've even explained what a prosthetic is. And you've shown all the different drawings that people can have. Kids are so inquisitive that when you I actually start telling them things it just becomes oh and they love it right so don't be afraid to tell them things they need to know it's not like oh no we shouldn't talk about that we should exactly. talk about it yeah. and that's how let's go came about because i was reading let's play and at the end of it uh when bobby introduces himself because you don't get to see bobby uh uh at, at, well you do have to be anyone introduces himself but at the end, he says, this is what I like, now let's play. And then uh, one little boy put his hand up and said, Mrs. Koch, how does he play with one leg? Mm. And then I said, mm -hmm, here we go. And then the questions were coming, can he do this, can he do that? So we had to put it in the book and show them, yes, he can do it too. Yes, he can be your friend. And yes, it's A, I always do this, it's A-OK -okay to be different. It's, and they, they just eat it up, right? Yes. Anytime I bring Bobby out, they just love it. Right. I mean, here we've got, you know, he's busy walking. And I think the acceptance from a child when they know, it's a totally different ball game. 
you know mm -hmm. um you know bobby can run here and we've actually seen in the olympics you know a guy with two prosthetics win okay he went on to doing some other things that he shouldn't have done but in that race he won with the prosthetic and we we've seen people in um the celebrity dancing show dancing with mm -hmm. prosthetics so it's let us look to the amazement of what they can do rather than limit them and what they can't do and if we right. could teach kids that from the beginning then they start seeing things as limitless that's what that's my one of my pages look at what we can do not what we can't do right right there's, and there's no limitations right i can climb yeah right that's we actually see this to adults don't we that it is um, it's all in your head <laughs> the i can't yes. is in your head if we I can, can teach our kids right from the word go that they can and they don't know what they can do until they try so at least mm -hmm. try we've got mm -hmm. uh, adults again that are more willing to try new things instead of getting stuck in an old rut mm -hmm. that's right drop the disc off of ability yes i am able yes as one of my wonderful guests said uh, differently abled which i love differently that able. not disabled differently abled differently. and i love mm -hmm. that i think it's really great you know and he says here sometimes when i get tired and need a rest i take off my prosthetic and use a crutch to help me move around the house and so it's like well, why do you use a crutch you know that's the kid mm -hmm. kids are why why yeah. <laughs> so let's mm -hmm. have some answers for them you know and you explain what a crutch is and sometimes the wheelchair is needed all right and mm -hmm. uh, um there is a wonderful show that came out um a few years ago it was more you know the the higher teens and it was called glee and it was, you know, mm -hmm. musical, but they brought in people um, that actually were in a wheelchair. They had people that were deaf. And it was, again, showing the differences that we are all the same. We're all looking for the same thing in life. The earlier we can teach them, the better. Do you find that education is behind in the way we teach our children? Yes. Yes, We're, and in my class, uh, definitely 100%. Yes, we have, uh, um, I, I, I actually love where I work. I mean, they, uh, I, I told them what I was doing and uh, they, we have a great regulation program and this is uh, included in the one I do. And it, it's, it's wonderful, right? And belonging and contributing. Um, it's, it's a wonderful thing because it opens a door where we can bring all this in. And uh, children are learning at a young age now. They are learning. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. Do you think that um, our technology is helping kids move further forward? Or do you think it's a hindrance in some cases? That depends. That, that's, that's, that depends on how it's used, right? And, and uh, that, to me, it depends on how it's used 100%. Mm. And if it's used, you know, if you're watching over and you're helping a young, a young child with it uh, and you're limiting time and what they're viewing and what they're doing, yes, it will help them. However, if you're saying, here you go, go do this, get out of my hair, I have things to do, that's totally different because you're not watching, right? You're not concerned about what's going on, right? All right? Unless you've installed blocks and there's parental blocks, there's things that you can do actually, right? Whereas, I mean, where, go ahead, sorry. No, this is where kind of the let's play kind of comes in. Is, you know, how many times do we see on Facebook and other things about how many people, you know, did this splash and puddles, play outside, only come in when mm -hmm. the lights were out, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And it was a healthy lifestyle, right? Because kids mm -hmm. were out playing together in the street. Now we're so scared to let our kids out of our sight. And playtime is all organized. And right. it seems to be restricted. And I think in a lot of ways, we're doing our kids a disservice because play is so utterly important in their lives. Yes, and with, with COVID now too, mm. and the restrictions of play, it is very hard, right? Very hard because uh, when, when the classroom was going, uh, you have kids social distancing, little, little, you know, three, four, five-year-olds social distance and, and all they want to do is play together. Yeah. They want to learn to share. They want to learn to care. And it's very hard. You're separating, separating, separating. 
and the, and the playing and socialization skills, that's key. That's key to a lot of their future, right? You need that. You really yeah. need that. Yeah. yeah. So it, is, it is a difficult time. And, you know, one we hope to get through a lot quicker, though, you know, we're still very much in the midst of it. And I think we've got a good nine months before we can maybe take that deep breath again. Um, but again, kids are incredibly resilient, are they? So, aren't they? So, you know, if we can get back in September, kids go back to school and there is that physical interaction they they will kind of forget the year faster than the than the adults will mm -hmm. and then they will just make up for lost time because our kids are incredibly resilient and i don't think we give them a, as much credit as we should mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have to agree with that yeah I, I have to agree with that they are they are resilient and yet they'll pick up but they don't think they'll they can never make up for that lost time but they will pick up their feet and move forward, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I've, uh, I've got three millennial children and a grandchild on the way. And I look at kind of the system out there and I've, it has to change. And I pray it changes, you know, before the, the kid goes to school. Um, but I think what we're seeing, there are so many young kids um, even five to, to 15, where they just seem to have kind of a no nonsense approach and they seem to get things a lot quicker and they just get on with it. And it, 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 they're our future leaders. And, and I'm just mm -hmm. seeing with so many of these kids, um, a creativity that's come about mm -hmm that I don't know if it's being brought about through, you know, through the technology or through different ways of teaching, but kids need to learn how to be creative, don't they? Because that's their, their entire future, our entire future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, 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 environmentally, I believe what, where, where you are uh, is going to definitely dictate who and who you become. Um, uh, how can I say it? The classroom is like the third teacher, right? Mm. So whatever's in it is what you're going to get out of it if you're yeah. using it properly. That's how I have to look at it. Yeah. yeah. As with anything in life, you mm -hmm. know, doom and gloom. It's what, what you are seeding, watering and nurturing is what will grow. And, uh, you know, looking at this past year of COVID and still in the midst of it and in restrictions, um, if you as a parent or as a teacher, uh, you know, frustrated, angry or this or that, your kid's going to pick that up, but they may not quite know why they're angry or why mm -hmm. they're frustrated um, because kids are more resilient. If they can't go and do this, you can go and put them to go and do that. Um, mm -hmm. So we have to be careful on how we are around children, don't we? Yes. And I find in our classroom it, uh, with what we're doing, um, kids do act that way, but we're also teaching them how to uh, how use strategies to calm down. Mm. Not only when you're angry, when you're frustrated, even when you're happy and overexcited, right? We are teaching the strategies that are necessary for learning. Calm yourself down. It's okay. Is it okay to be mad? Yes, it's okay to be mad. You need to feel mad. Mm -hmm. You need to get it out, but you also need to be able to deal with it, bring it down, do some breathing, right? Find a strategy that works for you. Run on the spot. You know, squeeze some clay in your hands. Whatever. There's always a way that we're going to bring it down, calm it down, and just relax, right? And then we'll start again because it's a okay to be angry. It's a okay to make mistakes, and we're going to move on and we'll do it together. My blocks fell and broke. That's okay. We can rebuild them, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. And don't meet their frustration and anger with yours. No. Right. Oh, Don't start no, yelling no, no, at them and Grr, snap out of it. No, 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 no. no, that is not no. going to have them calm down. That will be learned behavior and that will carry through. <laughs> yes, which we see evidence of so much. Um, yes. You know, I think one of the greatest gifts we can teach our children is simply to stop, take a breath, learn to breathe, mm -hmm. learn to calm down. Is it really that important to get excited about? Or if you want to be heard, calm down first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then think it through before you articulate what it is you're frustrated about, but you can't do it from that state. And if we could teach mm -hmm. our children when they're young to do this, this is an art they'll take through their entire lives. 
that's what we're working on that's what we're working on and number one is you have to learn how to listen mm. before you move and it's not just my lips it's whole body listening right your whole body has to listen eyes ears mouth and your whole body for you to be able to learn i mean and so many children feel frustrated yeah. because they don't feel heard nobody cares the, the old children should be seen and not heard type thing or i'm busy go away or i haven't got time for you and i think that's mm -hmm. again another gift we can give our kids is time if you can't deal with it right now and say you know i'm busy right now but at this time let's sit down and have a conversation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we dismiss our children's feelings all the time don't we yes and i make sure uh when we were one-on-one -on -one in the classroom um, I made sure that if I had 20 kids that year or if I had 26 kids, that I spent time with each kid every day. Every kid had, you know, two, three, five, ten minutes. Whatever I could give out, I had to talk to every kid every day. I didn't want anybody feeling left out. It was very important. I wanted them to be heard if they had something to say. Because I don't know what's happening at home mm -hmm. or when they're outside. But I know when they come into the classroom, they're going to have their chance to say and be heard safe safe area you know mm -hmm. and the other book you've got is the it hurts all about bullying and you know you go you know i am uh, justice i'm seven years old and these are my friends so you start off that way um mm -hmm. and um you know i like eating pizza and playing video games i have freckles brown hair and i wear glasses um and then you you know please don't call me name it hurts and then you've got the whole name calling. And, you know, they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I disagree. I mm -hmm. think those words become something that just builds and builds and builds and plays over and over in a person. And it stays with you forever. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And we see so many kids that are bullied when they're young and the effect that it has on their self-esteem, that it has on their mm -hmm. choices later, on their relationships that they have with people because they're always mm -hmm. in distrust, in the trying to please mm -hmm. people and not be themselves mm -hmm. for the fear of rejection. So right. nipping that in the bud right from the word go is essential because bullying scars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. You know, please don't push me. It hurts, right? It's, um, well, suck it up. I mean, I had one person I interviewed at the age of six or seven. He had been very badly bullied, an East Indian mm -hmm. kid. Went back to his father, and his father just hit him and said, suck it up, be a man. He's six, um, you know? Yeah. That doesn't you help. You know, no, keep telling until somebody's listening to you. If yes. You're not going to listen, keep on telling. Tell somebody, tell your friends. Tell anybody that's going to listen. Yeah. Be assertive. And, you know, by illustrating this and showing it, you know, please don't hit or kick me, it hurts. We're appealing to the empathy of a child. And, you know, yes. this is the narcissism comes from, you know, a, a, a child who kind of never accepts the responsibility for their own actions. Um, it, you know, comes from everybody else is at blame they never are and it comes from an injured child and we we see that an ex-president narcissistic child poster boy um it is a it's a state of survival for them and the, there's no empathy for anyone else so mm -hmm. teaching that empathy you know um, which most kids do have but mm -hmm. making sure that it's something that is they right there at the forefront it. yeah because right. how can you go and hurt someone else and see them cry right. and be upset if you have empathy, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got, you know, right. don't laugh at me, don't ignore me, it hurts. And, you know, please don't, 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 it hurts. And we see this so much with children and it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. you know, you've, you've got stop, it hurts. I had a daughter that was horribly bullied at school. And mm. she didn't want us to intervene. She wanted to do it herself because it, parents intervening only made it worse. And it was horrible to see. And she was a teenager. So if, mm -hmm. if this is going on when they're young, they just don't know how to cope with it and they retreat. Why mm. do we see so you know, many drug addicts or anything else going on there? Because they turn to something else to be able to cope with it. 
right? Mentally, it affects bullying, it affects mentally, emotionally, right? Not only just physically, and it carries on over the years. The, the behavioral problems that come from it, it it's very traumatic, long lasting, right? Mm -hmm. People, you know, it can even lead to uh, suicide in older, you know, we know that. And uh, it, bullying has to stop. It has yeah. to stop people. Yeah. And, and we have to teach them young. We have to. I was very worried about uh, the one page where you showed the, where I think it was uh, you uh, pushing, the pushing page mm -hmm. where Bobby's standing and he has a little, little drop of blood. I was like, hmm. Should I put that in or shouldn't I? That was huge for me. Yeah. And then I thought about what are kids doing? What is your technology? What are kids coming into class telling me that they're playing? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're playing that? You're allowed to play that, right? And all my brother's playing and I'm watching and kind of thing. And I'm like, well, you know what? That little drop of blood is reality. That's what, ha that's what can happen if you're pushed into something. So you know what? Yes, I'm going to show that. You need to mm -hmm. see that. This hurts. Right. It, sometimes you, you don't realize you're calling that person a name and inside that person, they are just torn apart. And I do believe what he justice is sitting in the closet there and he just can't take it anymore on one of my pages. And I really want the children to see this and learn this. And I think it's done in just, just the, it's a very simple way. And the message is loud and clear in that in all of my books, actually. Yes. There, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to look for that page. Which which book was it in so I can show it? The bullying book. The bullying book. Uh, so maybe I yeah. haven't got to that page yet. Um, no, I think you showed it when you said, don't push me. Okay, let me go back to that. Um, please, please, rock, please don't laugh or ignore me. Uh, yeah, please don't hit or kick me. And yeah, please don't throw things at me. And you've got a ball hitting the face and then you know wiping the eye but the thing is is that kids can be so cruel they yeah. really can yeah. be nasty and it's like but that shouldn't be in your nature to be so um yeah i think yeah. that's the one you have there with you push yeah. me and there's the blood just and it, a little drop just a little I, drop I but it's it, enough yeah i think it, that's what needed to be said and i mm. do i do want to say that i did not include um, like I have your physical, your verbal, your social bullying, but I did not include cyber bullying because I believe a three, four, five year old should not be online or cannot be right. online message. You know what I mean? So that's not in the book for that reason. Right. That and I, and I again, mean. if you've taught them kindness, caringness and empathy and awareness now that, you know, when it gets to that stage of the cyber, they're not going to buy the bullying. You've already given them right. the tools. Right? right. And, you know, right. here you've got, um, I'm telling my mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, I'm telling my teachers. Well, we know that an awful lot of the time bullying comes from a family member. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and unfortunately, a lot of the time when they do tell a parent or somebody else, they don't believe them. So I think that teaching a kid to tell everybody not be ashamed of it, to tell everybody, someone mm -hmm. along there will go, okay, we're, we're going to do something about this, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, I'm telling the police, I'm telling anyone that will listen, right? Right. Yeah. Be, be assertive. And if, if a child does come to you, you have to be, you have to offer re reassurance. And um, you have to, like, you definitely have to stay calm. Mm. You cannot get angry over it. Or that child, if he's bullied or she's bullied again, won't come back. Then right. Like, that might just be, in, well, well, I can't, I can't go, I can't tell them because they're mad. Yeah. No. Be calm, be cool, and, and just be understanding, right? You're going to be understanding. And then if it happens again, that child's going to come back to you, right? Yeah. That, and if you're bullied, you have to find someone, um, find someone and tell them what happened. Anybody, be assertive, stand up for yourself. If you're afraid to tell, tell your friend. Yes. Have your friends speak for you. And if you're afraid to go outside, stay with friends that you know that won't hurt you. Protect yourself. There are ways. There are ways to, to, to stop the bullying. And, and most kids, if they know someone's being bullied and, and they see that person as vulnerable, you will see a crowd of people go, 
they're bullying you oh no this isn't going to happen <laughs> they become very protective yeah. we don't want yeah. to see altercation but we do no. want to let the bullier know that that child isn't alone because they're going to bully the child that they've isolated and made alone yeah so, if you see if you see somebody being bullied uh, don't become part of the problem, be right. part of the solution, right? Be part of the solution, 100%. Yeah. And, you know, this goes back to a reaction. You know, as a parent, you want to react. Who's bullying you? You know, I'm yeah. going to get them. And that yeah. doesn't help the situation. So you want to empower the kid um, to, you know, my mom used to, to tell me, uh, because I was bullied a lot at school myself, um, I was literally dragged by my hair at boarding school and planted mm. in the garden as a weed because I was asthmatic and I couldn't do half the things, right? So oh, the dear. stupid thing is they planted me right outside the, uh, the um, uh, headmistress's window and she saw it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but but it, it, she used to say to me, let the, the person go at you. And doesn't matter how you feel, turn around with a blank face and say, sorry, were you talking to me? Because... Mm -hmm. Why does a bully bully? They bully for reaction. Mm -hmm. And if you mm -hmm. don't give them a reaction, okay. right, you can go and talk to someone else afterwards, but don't feed the bully. No, definitely not. But we have to teach them that. We have to teach them that don't take it personally. They're attacking mm -hmm. you because they feel unhappy, mm -hmm. right? And uh, something's going on in their life that they feel that they can do this or they're reacting to something. So maybe right. even, you know, as they get older, they can turn around with compassion and say, but what's worrying you that you should feel this way. But that's mm -hmm. something that comes later. If we teach them that empathy when they're young, that will mm -hmm. come on naturally later, won't it? Yes, it will. Yes. Everybody has the right to feel safe. Remember that. Right. The school system today, so few to teachers for so many kids and it's hard to really give everyone the attention that they need um do you kind of create in the classroom um what how do i want to say this you know a, a, a group of people when they see someone is feeling down that they can go and you know lift that person up so that it doesn't all fall on you, teaching them camaraderie of coming together? Um, well, in a kindergarten class, well, in mine, I'm sure both others, um, I, we do have a regulation. And what I've done is, uh, we've, my partner and myself, actually, there's two of us in the room, uh, we've taken pictures of each child and we've uh, put magnets on them and they're on the blackboard. And then we have feelings, happy, sad, angry, hungry, mad, afraid, and when they come in the morning, the first thing, this is before COVID, of course, the first thing they have to do is take their head and put it on how they're feeling. So we know how they're feeling when they come in. All right. So if they're hungry, we have a breakfast club and we have food we offer to them. If they're sad, uh, we do have a, um, a gab fest where we will go, oh, come on up and tell us why you're sad. And then we will ask the children, okay, little, little Johnny is sad today because his brother pushed them. Oh, this is awful. What can we do about this? What are strategies we can use? And the hands are going up left and right. Mm. And uh, you can tell them to stop. You can tell them to tell their mummy. Like the answer is, like it is, it is just a wonderful uh, program we have going on. And uh, um, it's, out, we, it's every day. And the nice thing is too, we'll have a group in the morning and we'll have a group talk in the afternoon. And the children can go at any time during the day. And if they're sad and they're feeling better, they can move it over to happy. If they're mm -hmm. gone from happy to sad or not feeling good or hungry, we're seeing, we're watching, and we're working on that as, as best as we can. And it's it's uh, an awesome uh, program that we're doing. Yeah, I, I, wish, I wish it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I wish it was in every classroom, actually, you know, because it doesn't matter what the age bracket is. Permission to feel something. We're taught all the time to suppress. Nobody wants to know how you feel. You know, suck it up. No, let people know how you feel. Yeah, no. You will see people wanting to help you. Don't keep mm -hmm. it inside because that's what causes dis-ease, right? So yeah. 
teaching them from the word go to actually express their feelings and yeah. that it's okay. It's okay yeah. to be sad, mad or glad and that yeah. I'm not going to get punished for it and that somebody's mm -hmm. really interested is, oh, what yeah. a wonderful, what a wonderful route to that foundation for them. Yes, that's what we're doing every day. They're, it's A-OK -okay to be angry in our classroom. It's A-OK. -okay. It is A-OK -okay to be sad. It is A-OK -okay to be afraid. We have, and it's really, what, what I love is when one child will come up and say, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to sleep in the dark. And then we'll have strategies, right? Use a nightlight, the flashlight, mm -hmm. use your stuffy. But that's not the only thing. You'll get another child that says, I'm afraid too. Mm -hmm. So, right? I'm afraid to sleep in the dark too. So it's just a wonder. It's just like a chain reaction. Yeah. And it just opens them up and they're okay, right? Our classroom definitely is like a huge family and, and, and it's okay. And they're accepting and they know uh they say you have that large class of, of 24 kids and then uh that person over there uh have, has created something and it has just fallen and mm, here comes the anger here comes the temper tantrum they know it's okay they're not looking at them like oh what's going on they know and they understand and then you could hear them say it's a-okay rebuild it you can do it right it's it's awesome i just i'm i just i never want to leave my job <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> Are the other grades learning from you and applying these strategies in their classrooms? Uh, yes, that's the nice thing. The school where I am, uh, the, the grade one teacher used to be with me and she started this foundation and I, I just, and my new partners have built on it, built on it. So, and it is carrying through. Good. We are definitely working on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, it's hard being a kid today. You know, I think in an awful lot of ways, there's way too much stimulation and that you know, there isn't enough clarity. There isn't enough time for simply for them to make mud pies and get dirty and, and just even have time, space of their own. Um, mm -hmm. My kids time out when they were young. If, if, if we were all in one room and they were having a tantrum, they had to sit in the corner facing us. And mm -hmm. it's like when you're ready to calm down and join as you can, but you're going to see what mm -hmm. you're missing out on, right? And mm -hmm. I would try every day to, for them to have some quiet time to themselves, mm -hmm. uh, yes. time for their thoughts, time for their own creativity, time to just wonder, let their heads mm -hmm. wonder. Because I don't mm -hmm. think we give our kids enough time to do that. We're always the next agenda, the next schedule, the next this, the next that. Where do they have mm -hmm. time just to be? Yes. Well, I, I can say again, if I use my class, um, we do have, uh, again, prior to COVID, the word COVID is driving me crazy. It's a different um, game altogether with COVID, right? <laughs> yes, it, it was open. Like, there was no, we don't really have a schedule. We know what we're doing. We know what we want to cover. And we make sure that, um, we find the interest of children and we put it into the curriculum. So, and then we, what we do is we have areas uh, where they can go and do that. I, my, it would be nothing for me to go outside and shovel some snow and put it in a big water table and um, then bring it, push it into the classroom <laughs> and we'd have uh, water bottles with food coloring and stuff in it that they could squirt the snow and see what happens when you have red and blue what happens or uh, it's nothing to fill that table with mud and I would go to the corner store and get oh we had worms I would buy worms and we throw them in the mud and we were <laughs> looking at worms and we were pulling the worms and and we go in our classroom in the in the kindergarten program we have in Ontario uh, a lot we gear to the interests of the children so we're always like taking notes oh what did that one say what are they building and then we'll, I'll try and we'll try and put them together um, like example, snowman. We were talking about snowman. So we uh, had a game, a couple of snowman games today, where um, we drew the snowman, and then there was numbers one to six all over, and then they would roll the dice, and let's say if a six came up, they would match it to the snowman, right? And this is done virtually. So, uh, and we sent a kind of a package home, kind of thinking that the shutdown, um, the closures might happen for a little while, and we might go on virtual. So we sent like a pre-package home. And uh, so that was one way to do a snowman. And then there was another way where 
you would just roll the dice and let's say if you got the number two, this time you would put his two eyes on. And number four, you would do his hands, like you would actually build the snowman. So you have to be very creative and it's called webbing and you have to be able to put it all together and try and get the uh, interest of all the children, even though it's just talking about snowman. Or working, right. But you're yeah. really pulling out the math, right? The math yes. is coming out, you're scubatizing, you're counting. And if you're playing with your sibling at home, you're sharing, you're getting all that in there, the socialization. It's, it's, it's awesome. And, you know, with the COVID and kids having to learn virtually right now, you know, this is a time, you know, for the parents to kind of get in. I mean, teachers have definitely been more appreciated through COVID mm -hmm. as parents have had to step up and become the teachers. But, you know, it, it like, OK, the whole family can go and build a snowman. Let's follow this. Let's do it together. Um, yeah. And kids are so eager to please and they're so eager to mm -hmm. learn. And they oh. could be so intoxicating in that excitement that get with it, play with them, mm -hmm. do it with them, yeah. right? And they will learn what they need. And at the end of it, okay, what did you learn today? And oh, right. I learned that too, or I learned this. Make it a group thing. While you are at home with your kids, be interactive with them in their world. And that, you know what, that's the beauty of having a three, four, five-year-old, six-year-old, because in kindergarten, when we're doing this work virtually, a lot of times the parents have to assist, right? Yeah, and we'll do like choice. We'll put up, we'll have a choice time. It's like half hour in the morning and half hour in the afternoon. And there's like eight panels and each one has a different activity for them to do. And uh, one of them today was build an obstacle course. And oh my gosh, another one was build a fort. And the kids were just, and the parents, like we had parents when they came back to show us what they did, they were filming their child doing that obstacle course. And I'm telling you, I've seen obstacle obstacle courses in my day and built many with children, but some of the ideas, I was writing them down. Like one little girl, one of her stops, she had to stop and print her name. The next stop, she had to stop and do a puzzle, a number puzzle. And it was like, oh my gosh, the learning here is phenomenal. Yeah. We're not just stacking pillows to jump over, but this parent has actually instilled printing, right? Alphabet recognition, numbers, and like, wow. And we're, you know, yay, I love it. Love yes. It. Yeah, that interactiveness, that uh, allowing them to expand and showing them what is possible. I mean, mm -hmm. we are wondrous by nature. We love adventure. We love exploring. And the moment we stop doing that, we kind of become very complacent in our lives. And that's when things start shutting down. So the more mm -hmm. that children and that the more that we play with children, the more we actually discover the inner child in ourselves. And the more we start mm -hmm. looking at other life, you know, around us as, as what's possible, what's our opportunity here. Oh, I didn't see it that way before, but look at it. And mm -hmm. kids are wonderful teachers. They really mm -hmm. are, if we're willing to learn from them. Yes, they have great extensions. We set out the, the, the chores and they extend it. And that's the beauty of learning, right? The extensions that they add on. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've got a grandkid coming in, in a couple of months and my first one might be my only one, I don't know, but <laughs> at least I get a grandkid. I've got a little grandson yeah. coming. And you know, um, I always thought I'd be kind of like the Auntie Mame type grandma, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, I just can't wait to see that kid grow. And one of my kids uh, um, had this wonderful, well, two of them had wonderful teachers. One of the teachers had a bathtub in, in his room. He had a fort, he had a tree stump. And then if you finished your work, you could go and read in these other areas. He also had kind mm -hmm. of reward things for gummy bears and you could add, a, mm -hmm. but he, he, like he came in one day dressed as Einstein, you know, or he would come mm -hmm. and dressed as something else. And he, he sparked the imagination in kids and made yeah. learning exciting. And I think kids just sitting there all day long learning, turn to page such and such. We, we're not capitalizing on how kids really learn. And they do learn mm -hmm. through play, don't they? Through interaction. Yes. yes. I, it's, quite, it's kind of funny you said that because I, in my room, I have a, um, a tickle trunk. And it's probably about mm, four feet tall and about three feet wide. And uh, it is full of props. I use the mm. puppets, I use the costumes, 
I bring it out mustaches all the time. Like a lot of kids will say, are you wearing your mustache today? And I'm like, well, <laughs> but it, you know, we, we got the pirate song on, we're doing our dance to it. I'll come out, I'll have the hat on, the mustache on, the parrot on the shoulder. And today it was, it was really um, funny because um, uh, we had a 10 minute break and something for some reason, I said, I got to find this. <laughs> So I went on Amazon and I put in clown shoes because I always wanted a pair of clown shoes. And when the kids come back, I think it would be great to walk in the room with clown shoes. I really want them to laugh because I miss them. So I was showing my partner and I'm like, look what I found, look what I found. And she goes, oh, no, you're not. No, I said, yes, yes, I am. So as soon as I had lunch, I went, tick, tick, order. So now they're coming. <laughs> I can't wait for my clown shoes. <laughs> the the Just beauty the kids, of yeah, of so. kids is that they love. I mean, I I was a clown for my son's um, third birthday, and he didn't know it was me, and oh, uh, and uh, I was Bozo the clown, and uh, oh, it actually got me a gig as Santa Claus, and uh, <laughs> and I did three different areas of playing Santa Claus, and the one time the press came in, I had one child that cried, and that's the one they took oh. the photograph of, right? <laughs> but. <laughs> I think the, one of the things we forget as adults is just to play silly buggers, you know, just to be silly. You know, when I found my, my kids' energy was really high, I would put on We Are The Champions and everybody would dance and sing along and be silly. Yeah. And, yeah. and it would just as a release. And my kids mm -hmm. all the time were putting on plays. And yeah, sometimes they were really rid ridiculous and dramatic and other times there were a lot of fun, but they put so much imagination into it. It was absolutely yeah. wonderful. Allow, exactly. allow, allow your children to explore. Mm -hmm. That's right. And there's no wrong. You can't create anything wrong. You can't put any print. It's just a redo. There's nothing that's wrong. And if you know what, that's your artwork. I love it just for what it is. If you created it, it's yeah. wonderful. Right? Yeah. No yeah. We don't need the comparison. We don't need the competition. Right. No, we just need to not. say, look how beautiful this is. It's different from yours, but it, you know, it, that that's the beauty of it. Nobody's is the yeah. same. And I think this is one of the things that kids need to learn right from the word go, the empathy. It's okay to be different in that. Mm -hmm. If you are a different culture, tell me about your culture. What kind of food do you mm -hmm. eat? What kind of thing? Be inquisitive, learn from it. This mm -hmm. whole problem that we, and especially that we're seeing in the States right now, is so divided on mm -hmm. it being this one box and everybody else is, you know, wrong, yes. is, is what's holding us back as a society. And mm -hmm. if we could embrace, I mean, here in Canada, we're so multicultural. And yeah. it doesn't mean we don't have our issues with racism. It is there, right? But... It, how can a kid grow up racist if we teach them empathy, kindness, and difference right from the word go? That's right. Right? And, and they take that the home to their parents, time. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember my Definitely. daughter calling my, my mother racist. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not, yes, you are, Grandma, and I'm not going to put <laughs> up with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so don't shout them down for speaking their truth. Yeah, there is yeah. ways that they, they can say it to be respectful, but let them mm -hmm. speak their truth, right? Right. That's really 100%. important. Now, you've won an award here, the Purple Dragonfly Book Award, the SM mm -hmm. winner, which is wonderful, and people can see that there in the corner. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. I mean, not only graphically have you got, you know, a, a, a very beautiful visual in the three books here, um, but you've kept it very simple, not just with the graphics, but with the words. And it's, it's I'm almost, for that. Mm. and what I like about it is you're saying something, but you're, you're leaving room for food for thought. That's right. right. You you know, conversation. Exactly. You know, we are not broken. We are unique. What's unique, you know, yeah. and, what? and leave, you know, have a kid ask a question. We are all different. Yeah. Why are we all different? You know, mm -hmm. and all of these things that can spark a, conver a conversation, you know, some of us can walk, some of us can't. Um, right. Let, let our kids ask the questions and be willing to answer. In, a, in yeah. a way, obviously, they're going to understand. But if we can 
get them in that DNA really young to have the empathy, the caring, the kindness, the consideration and the acceptance of differences and the permission to speak, to say how they feel and not be shut down. They're going to go through life being so much stronger, so much more creative and so much more adventurous and kinder. And, and, yes. And what a wonderful world it would be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I have, you know, this is Raise Your Gift to Children series. I have a Forgotten Children series uh, of books that are going to be coming up, uh, contributors like yourself in it. And we have to realize that the problem we have with society as an adult, you can pretty well most of the time go back to looking at the childhood, looking at the mm -hmm. system that's let them oh, down. 100%. And the system that's created this problem. So why are we band-aiding the problem? Why are we not looking at the systemic problem and dealing with it? And that is right. from the word they go, from the moment they're born, you know, that's of right. and teaching our children. To yeah, I hope I, I'm trying and I hope that these three books that we have a start, you know, with the acceptance and the awareness and the bullying and I do have, a, well, many, many more books that I have to uh, get cracking on, um, but um, it's a start. And all my books will be geared at this age and um, very simple for understanding and um, left open for them, for us to talk about. I want STEM, right? I want it to go places. I want the conversation. I want them to know. I, they need to know. They need to understand, right? And that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep putting the word out. Yeah. I did not, I did not do the GoFundMe. I did not do any of that. It was all me and uh, it had to be done. And it was just time. And, you know, quite honestly, not, not only do I want to see this in every home, but I want to see it in, in every kindergarten. You know, this is well, a tool for teachers, right? Yes. Yeah. The, the book, that was the award, the bullying book one for, uh, uh, that category for education which is wonderful and the uh, let's play and let's go one in their division for uh spe special needs uh yeah so they both won all three actually won which was yeah whoo, blew me away i was not ready for that so <laughs> yeah i mean you know just amazing right and yeah, the, yeah. the other thing is like the size you've made them square and you've made them very easy to open and to go to and and as I said simple graphics uh, uh, allowing you know the questions to be asked but also for a child to go that's me you yeah. know and and uh, so it's okay for me to be different yeah it's okay yeah. you know and I, I know that from so many adults that go through life in in struggle and pain it's they're waiting for permission to, to be themselves or even to go mm -hmm. on their self-discovery to find out who they are because they've mm -hmm. lived by that societal dictation and expectation of what they should be and mm -hmm. once they're given that permission to be who they are and explore who they are you know then mm -hmm. their true gift comes out why do we have to mm -hmm. wait for someone to be 40 50 or 60 let's get them when they're yeah. young let's put them on the right That's path right all the way through school, all the way through their lives. Let's give them the tools and the skills they need to navigate life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. let's, let's just break the mold altogether of how we teach our children. Because it, the more interactive it is, the stronger it is. Yeah, I agree 100%. Let's do it. Yeah, most certainly. Now these books can be found on Amazon. And Amazon, chapters, Indigo, a um, lot of the uh, online um, uh, books. Uh, I can't think of the Apple Books. Is that? Yes. It's an I, Apple I Books? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah I it's a Chapters Indigo. Um, yeah. It's books. It's freesinpress.com yes. slash brand uh, plus plus ecosh. And uh, the Chapters Indigo, all of it's here on your posting, Barnes and Nobles. And um, of course, you, you're promoting it also on your Facebook. And of course, it's also yeah. on Amazon. So how do people get hold of you if they wish to have a dialogue with you or they've got some ideas uh, themselves? Uh, they, can, they can email me. I have no problem with email. And then if we want to have a conversation, we'll pick that up from the email. Okay. Right. And if you yeah. give people your e email, please, Lev. 
um, Bree Koch eight at msn.com. So that's all lowercase B R E K O C H and the number eight at msn.com. Excellent. And they can also find you on Facebook at Brenda mm -hmm. dot uh, Samu Koch. Is that no. right? Yes, but the one for the books is at Brenda E. Koch. There's my personal one, which they can see me there too. And then there's Brenda E. Koch, where all of the books and everything we've done with the books is on the Brenda E. Koch. Excellent. And you've got a wonderful little video here, you know, a prosthetic to help him walk and other types, needs of wheelchairs, is that if we could stop looking at each other as broken, if we could stop yeah. looking at each other as flawed, you know, a diamond that is flawed, it is considered to be more valuable. Why can't we look at a human being that way? When we look at the challenges, you know, like the challenges that little, um, you know, Bobby has to go through here with just one leg and one eye and one ear, that hasn't stopped him from doing the things he wants to do. Is it a challenge yeah. him for him? Yes, but by meeting that challenge in life, there's going to be no obstacle in his way to do anything he wants to do. Right, right. We want to be, we want to be inclusive, right? Yeah. That's part of Bobby's life. We want to be inclusive. Like we could, we could be accepted. We could be invited to the dance, but we, when we're asked to dance, we're included. Yes, right? yes, so. exactly, exactly. Um, you've got Bobby in a lit version behind there. Let's let's see him. Oh, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see him. Where you just put it in front of your camera there. Can you see him? Yeah, pull back a little bit so we can see him. So we can see the one eye down a bit. Okay. Down. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Right. Yeah. He, he looks gorgeous. He really does. Yeah. Right. And he's wearing his, he's wearing his prosthetic. <laughs> Super cute. A woman named Bonnie Proctor made this for me. She is amazing. She also made the justice. She is she's up there. And she got a little carried away with them. <laughs> Here's justice. She's coming down. And she got Pull a little carried away with them. Pull it I back a little bit so we can see it. Pull it. There he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's had a big, that was a rough one. That was a bad event of bullying. That was a last draw for him. Yeah, but that that's justice right yeah. you know you know never mind the bullying you know we've also got to understand that there are many children in the world that are still living in war-torn areas and mm -hmm. you know with COVID there's a lot of children out there that are suffering in third world countries or you know other countries that aren't paying attention to it that you know the parents are stressed the teachers are stressed everybody's stressed the kids going to be stressed and this is m more important at this time that we listen that we reassure them and, and, and it's okay for you to say you know what i don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but if we're prepared today we can handle tomorrow and yeah, because it's okay for us to admit that we don't have all the answers mm -hmm. yes let's let's get through the day and uh it's a hard one. That's a hard one for me because I don't often think about that. I'm, I'm a, you know, you're aware of it, but a lot of times you're caught up in your own world. And when you do have to stop and think about it, it is, it, it, you, what can you do? Um, but help them get through the day, right? If you're in that situation, think about today and we'll work on tomorrow when it comes. Yeah. Right. If you're in that situation. I would love to see these books in every foster home. It's a horrible statistic that 70% of foster children end up in jail. And that mm -hmm. is because they're tossed around like mm -hmm. garbage and, and people aren't prepared to deal with their nonsense, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because they're not understanding their pain. They're not understanding right. their loss. They're not understanding their own I, disconnect. I've been a, a, actually a foster parent I'm um, in my 16th year, my husband and myself right now, and uh, we've had a lot of children come through this home, and uh, they go through, they definitely do go through a lot, and they do need the extra time, they do need the, the, the love, and most important, I think, is the consistency. Yes. Like they need the consistency. They need to feel rooted. They need, they need that. And uh, it's something that I, I'm going to continue to do for as long as I can. And uh, 
Yeah. Well, they're lucky kids that get to come to you. And I'm sure wherever they move on to, they move on a hell of a lot stronger than when they first arrive. You know, one of my foster mums, she only fosters boys, and she's saying she had a 16-year-old who came to her who had never been hugged in his life, never oh. known a hug. And, you know, how despairing is that? Because it, yeah. it, that energy of, of heart against heart, of hugging someone is so important, and you can't hug mm -hmm. a young child enough and uh, to, to have gone through life of never knowing it. And these aren't children that are just broken, so toss them away. No, it, it falls on us to do something about mm. it. Um, mm. The system let them down. Let us not let them down. Let's build them up and let them go out there being adults in the world, knowing they count, knowing we care, knowing they're empowered, and knowing they have the abilities to do anything they want to do. Yeah. Right? Loved right and you know when yeah. a child is loved you know i always you always used to say I, I can get mad with my children i would always say to i can get mad and disagree with what you've done i'm mad at the action that you've taken but never ever think i don't love you i will love you yeah. through thick and thin but i can get mad at, at an action that you've done and you know accordingly so i think that is something that's very important for parents or adults to know never ever use love as the weapon no when they're loved they will give you a rainbow back yes oh gosh yes absolutely well i'm hoping that you will join us in the you know forgotten children series um because your contribution will be wonderful you know a chapter in that and uh, the mm -hmm. um, the audio vision and the video um because it's it's what people need to know um i'm tired of seeing the band-aid or you know or, or a, a paintbrush pointed over the problem let's look at the seed let's look at the root you know mm -hmm. let's why do we have so many foster children in care why aren't we helping the parents be parents you know mm -hmm. stabilizing mm -hmm. the parents so they can be a better parent instead of taking kids away all the time and and uh, this whole thing of churning them out through school no we're not churning them out we're custodians we're guardians we're there to nurture, to feed, to support, to enlighten. You know, mm -hmm. we don't rule over them. We have a responsibility over them to give them as much as they need in order to navigate through yes. life. And you've certainly got off to a great start, my dear. <laughs> Not Thank only you. the work Thank you do, so but much. with these books. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank oh, my pleasure. Thank you for being here and thank you for sharing this. It's uh, these will be passed on to my grandson when he's a little older, <laughs> when he's born for a start. <laughs> um, but setting kids off on the right, the right path by investing in them properly, by giving them the voice, by sparking their creativity, by showing them that it's OK to be different. To celebrate that is so very, very important in life and, and the tools that we need. And these books are great tools, not only for the thank kids, so but much. for the adult that's reading them. So thank you so much for sharing with us here today, Brenda. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, folks, you can get this at the Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, all of the other ones that are labeled. Just put in Brenda Koch on selfdiscoverymedia.com. Her show will come up. And let's look at these books, getting them out. If you, uh, if you want, buy some and take them to your own kindergarten. Give them to your teacher. Yeah. Let, the, let her be empowered. Um, if you know somebody with young kids, give them to them. Have them in your own library if you are a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle. You know, this is the thing, the tools are here. Follow these tools and it will help you along the way. But please don't disregard the kids. We need them. They're our future. Let's nurture them today. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye Thank for you. now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.